Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about some interesting news that actually comes from a certain person who is intimately familiar with the MPD report and just how successful the Switch's first year has been. So this comes from Matt Piscatella, who is a person who works with the MPD group on industry analysis, so he has direct access to all the data at the MPD. And for those who don't know, the MPD is a group that tracks sales data of physical copies of games and hardware and all that great stuff. They actually track like the whole gambit of retail, but not just video games, but obviously we're talking about video games in this case. Uh, and he tweeted out that the Switch US physical software sales are on pace to be the biggest ever for a Nintendo platform launch year since 1995 and by a fairly large margin. And why 1995 is significant is because that's the very first year that they track the data. So they have not, you know, this does not include uh, the NES or the Super Nintendo in terms of its launch year. It doesn't, you know, include the Game Boy or any of that stuff, but it obviously has N64 since that launched in 1996 in the US. It has the GameCube, it has the Wii, the Wii U, obviously DS and all that stuff in between. So, uh, he clarified that this meant uh, the first 12 months. So not you know, if the console launched in November and only had one month of sales data, obviously a full year of sales data or even six months of sales data for Nintendo Switch uh, would have an, a huge advantage. But that's not the case. He's talking about a full calendar year. So the first 12 months from launch until 12 months later, Switch has the best software sales. Forget the hardware, right? Hardware numbers, uh, we don't have any exact updates, and maybe the MPD uh, doesn't have exact updates either. Maybe they're just allowed to tell Nintendo, and it's up to Nintendo to release that data. But they do track software specifically. So it's crazy to me to think that the Switch, and we're not even... We're not even at the one-year mark, right? The one-year mark isn't until March 3rd, 2018. And it is on pace and currently shattering Nintendo's own records for first-year sales. That is insane. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that, one, the Switch is obviously a really popular device. And two, the software sales and the software releases have been extremely strong. Starting off with Breath of the Wild, and then you also have to consider uh, <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Arms Splatoon and Mario Odyssey coming up, uh, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And this isn't even getting into some of the successful third-party games like Street Fighter 2, the Ultimate Edition or whatever that's called. There's so many versions of Street Fighter 2. Uh, and... And uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris and Snipper Clips, which is a digital whatever. The point is, is that the software sales are insanely good. And this is surprising on many levels because the Wii was Nintendo's previously most successful system ever in terms of home consoles, right? 100 million units sold, and a lot of that was, you know, the first few years had huge software release after huge software release after huge software release. You know, we're talking Wii Sports and Wii Fit even and Just Dance in there, and Mario Galaxy. You include all these games that released in the very first year of the Wii's lifetime, and Switch is on pace to shatter, absolutely shatter those sales. Now, obviously, this is just includes physical, uh, but what's even more interesting about that is since the Wii era was probably Nintendo's most successful launch year in terms of software sales, uh, digital really was kind of new back then for Nintendo, so most of those sales would have been physical sales. So the fact that their physical sales are going to shatter that, not including any of the digital sales of any of these games, Nintendo software sales this first year for Nintendo Switch are probably the highest Nintendo has had in the history of the company outside of maybe the NES and Super Nintendo. But you know what? With digital sales included, it's very possible that even though we'll never know for sure unless Nintendo tells us themselves uh, yeah, Switch is on pace to have the most successful launch year software-wise in Nintendo's history. And that is just mind-boggling because remember, what has always been the reputation for Nintendo? It has no games. Uh, I've heard so, even some people about Switch. There's nothing to play on Switch. There's 18 games releasing just this week. 18 of them. Today, my, one of my most anticipated games of the year on Switch Golf Story released. And no, I don't have Golf Story right now. I was actually about five bucks short of, of getting it on, off the eShop. Thank my prior video <laughs> for spending some of my eShop credit on the uh, Mario Bros. Arcade Classic. But yeah, it's it's whatever. I'll eventually get the game. But yeah, it's 
a, a whole week of 18 games. I know a lot of that digital, only one physical release. We're talking about FIFA 18. And yeah, FIFA 18, for all my criticism of it, yeah, it looks like a solid game. I, I never thought that FIFA 18 would be anything but a solid game. Uh, I just think it could be better. I, I expect better. And maybe I expect too much. I don't know. But this is just exciting. So when we think about why, why is Bethesda hopping on board? Why is 2K hopping on board? Why are these third-party Western studios starting to think, hey, look, we should really get on the Switch hype train. The software sales are backing up the reason to do it. Doom and the Wolfenstein are probably going to perform really well. Skyrim, despite being an old game, is probably going to perform very well. In reality, the Switch is in a spot right now where it's very hard to be so critical of it that you think Nintendo is doomed. In fact, one of the one of the replies was, "Oh, Nintendo's doing really, really well, so they must be doomed again." And uh, yeah, that's just a general reputation that a lot of Nintendo haters have had for a long time, uh, hoping that Nintendo goes third party and maybe they want Nintendo games on their PlayStation Fours and Xbox Ones and PCs. I have no idea, and I don't blame them because Nintendo games are fantastic. But Nintendo's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, the software success just boggles my mind. Like The fact that this is more successful than the Wii era, I didn't think that was even possible for any platform holder ever in the future, especially Nintendo themselves. Uh, even with the strong lineup they've had for Switch, it's crazy to me to think, man, they have this intense lineup of games, but it's still, they could only get like 10 million of these units out, and there's no way it's going to cripple sales. Apparently, Switch owners, like myself, are buying tons of games. And, yeah, I mean, if you just look here, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of my own library. What do I got in here? 12, you know, 12-plus 12 games or so. Uh, and I plan to get Golf Story and, and some other games here coming up soon. Yeah, It's insane to me to think of how popular uh, the Switch is and how many games people are buying. I'm actually curious what the game uh, selling to uh, console purchasing ratio really is. Uh, I would love to see Nintendo update the overall Switch software to Switch hardware sales so we can actually see what the attach rate is. I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at something nuts, something like 8, eight to 1, 9 to 1 attach rate. It would not surprise me at all. Uh, and that would obviously include digital sales in there as well. But I am just so thrilled for the Switch, for all my criticisms of things that Nintendo does, right? I, I got quite a bit of flack for the last video. Also, quite a bit of Defenders. It'll be interesting Prime comments this week. But... When you just look at the whole of Nintendo right now, they are doing so well, and they deserve to be doing well. The Switch is a hit product for all of the right reasons. That's what I love so much about this new generation of Nintendo, this new attitude seemingly for Nintendo where they start caring about third parties, is that Nintendo is having a hit for the right reasons, and whatever the, you know, I guess the right reasons is totally subjective, you know, there's plenty of people who love the Wii and the DS era, including myself, uh, for very different reasons in the Switch era, but I feel like they are, they are becoming a success by showing they care about gamers again, and that's just awesome. Thank you, Nintendo. I wish you tons of success in the future. Keep bringing these strong library of games, keep bringing on these third-party companies, because this, you know, as much as this is the strong uh, a very strong launch year for Switch, I think it can get even better. I don't think you're done yet. I don't think you're peaking. I think there is still, uh, you know, a, a higher peak to achieve. Good luck, Nintendo. And I hope all of you guys out there, Switch owners or people considering to buy a Switch, uh, enjoy your time. And in fact, everyone, enjoy your time playing games because as I have to re often remind people, we play games for fun. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter what games you enjoy. Just have fun. Anyways, I'm Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess you hit that dislike button. Uh, subscribe for more content so you never miss a single video we make. And as always, if you would like to show us some support, you could head on over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For just $1 a month, you gain access to Patreon-exclusive updates. You get a special role on our public Discord server, which is really cool. You get access to Contact Me Directly, where I will respond to you on a daily basis uh, as much as I reasonably can. And then uh, we also have a $5 tier, which gives you all of that, plus early access to our podcast. And $20 a month, I know it's a little insane, uh, it gives you uh, an ability to be on one of our podcasts. We have that limited to only 10 people, I think, two spots out of that 20 are current, or out of that 10 are currently taken up. Uh, so just eight spots left for people who would lo like to be on our podcast. And on top of that, we've extended our stretch goals and announced our new stretch goal. We've got a video right up here somewhere. 
uh, where you can go check out what our new stretch goal is, having to do with a live news show that hopefully you guys will enjoy. Uh, beyond all of that, we have opened up subscriptions here right on YouTube. If you go to gaming.youtube.com slash Nintendo Prime YT, I'll put a link down in the description as well for this. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. No, you don't need to subscribe to get access to our content. All of our content at Nintendo Prime, barring maybe a couple Patreon uh, exclusive things, uh, such as like exclusive updates, will be always free. Regardless of if you subscribe to anything, it's just a way for you to show your support for what I do here at this channel. Uh, so you can subscribe through that link. There'll be a little sponsor button over on the right. I guess they call it sponsorship here on, on YouTube. And yeah, you do that, and you while well, we have live, this is really cool for live streams. While we have live streams, uh, your if you're a subscriber, I can make it so subscriber uh, comments in the live streams actually appear in a more direct fashion. I can also uh, take subscriber comments and separate them out from the general comments and make sure I always you know basically if you're a subscriber, guaranteed to respond to your uh, comments just like I would for people who support us through super chat as well. But yeah, thank you so much for all of your love and all of your support. And Nintendo probably thanks you as well for all the love and support Switch is getting this year. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, and I will catch you in the next one.